this episode of YouTube is honoring Aiden, who was born on April 27th, 2008, and passed away on August 14th of this year. And uh, he was born at the Wildlife Science Center, generously donated to us by Director Peg Callahan. Uh, he and Denali were uh, our first uh, choice of the litter, and uh, we uh, are grateful to Peg and the Wildlife Science Center staff to allow us to be there for that moment when uh, they came into our possession and the many, many wolf care staff who dedicated their time and care to make sure that they were well socialized and that they built a bond with humans uh, and a trust with humans that we could expand into their life uh, from the time that they're pups to their adulthood and uh, can manage them in the aging process and all of the challenging things that come with older wolves and all of that trust is is part of the socialization process and why we uh, work with socialized wolves and why we choose to socialize so Aiden also has a great history with pack members like Grizzer um, when he was a pup Aiden really socially bonded with Grizzer and that uh, later became an issue uh, in retirement with Grizzer, and he also had a strong bond with Maya. Uh, Maya was our dominant female and kind of took Aiden under his wing, even though um, Aiden was a very uh, respected his pack leaders. He listened to them, and even though Maya was a little intense sometimes in his early life, and this is a clip of Maya during a period of time when she was uh, directing uh, where Aiden could be and what he could do. Um, their conflict um, was an interesting relationship and eventually created a pair bond, and that's really when Aiden became a pack leader. And then, of course, uh, Maya passed, and he had to pair bond with Luna, which was a little bit different uh, challenge. And then uh, with Luna's circumstance with the 2016 pups, where she wasn't able to maintain uh, a, a, a rank within the pack, Aiden took over, and it was his strong social behavior that was grace and salvation on that first introduction day in 2016. Um, Aiden being who he was and uh, um, giving that reassurance to a pup that was a little bit traumatized by the entire event. And uh, um, even now we uh, saw Grayson and Aiden communicate um, more times than not in this past uh, year or two since uh, Aiden's been retired. So. We, again, have a lot of memories of Aiden, and, and uh, um, towards the end, when he was no longer the pack leader, um, there was a little bit of tension with Bolts and uh, with the Arctics, but um, as we understood Aiden's needs, we did allow him to mentally let go of this pack, and so there was a lot of debate in 2017 about needing to take Aiden out and not letting him go through the stress of being deposed as a pack leader. But what we discovered was that allowing him to mentally let go of this pack really meant that he could come into retirement with a much better mindset, much better frame of reference. Um, he, Aiden was no doubt a very complex animal from the time that he was a young pup until he was, uh, you know, until he passed away. Um, there was a lot of complexity to how he viewed things, to how he interacted with fellow wolves, with how he interacted with the staff. And it's that social part of the wolf pack that I think is very, very important for people to understand in captivity. There's many, many things that make them not dogs, uh, whether, you know, it's the predatory drive, it's the digestive system, it's, you know, um, you know social uh, scent marking behavior, it's rank behaviors, it's, uh, you know, uh, compatibility, it's uh, tolerances for each other. Um, one thing I think that's really important for us to understand is that these animals that are pack driven and uh, weaknesses are shown as vulnerability oftentimes mask a lot of things that maybe you might see in a domestic dog a little bit earlier that you won't see in a wolf and so even at this time and this clip was filmed in 2017 uh, prior to him being retired you know we were dealing with mast cells then we were dealing with these uh, responses of the immune system to a, a circumstance um, uh, that made him uh, you know, weakened. All the efforts that we did to make sure that he was mentally prepared for retirement uh, meant that he was relaxed in retirement and uh, that allowed him to integrate with Grizzer and Luna and form uh, 
a social structure there without having the anxiety of you know trying to still run the other pack that was next door to him so that was very very important to us and it was important for Grizzer and Luna to not have Aiden so ramped up about being a pack leader so to those people who didn't quite understand why we waited so long to retire him it was a real important component um, to this part of his life um, when he could relax and just be retired and not have to deal with the stress of uh, being uh, with the exhibit pack still had to be a little stress of you know Luna um, uh, at times because uh, she's a much younger retiree. Um, Grizzer being an older retiree was quite a bit more relaxed where Luna's still young in retirement, um, still had a lot of social drive and a lot of uh, wanting to interact and wanting to play bow. This is what we call the play bow, um, scratching at the front, kind of um, um, bowing down and, and uh, we call it invite chase. Usually what uh, follows is a wolf does that to another wolf, um, scratches the ground, kind of bends over and then runs and tries to get another wolf to chase them. So that was an important part of, of uh, our communication. This is um, from my ring camera. So we had a ring camera installed um, throughout the enclosure so I could get a, a, an alert if there's movement or activity. This is a transition area. This was the morning that I took him in for the surgery on the 13th. I was not, um, I was very, very concerned about where he was at. I was not very happy with kind of um, how he felt that day. Um, you know, we went ahead and I told the vets, we went ahead and, uh, and went through the surgery and he seemed like he was doing okay. And then this is the morning after the surgery. He was up. Um, we had our, our morning breakfast out there. I had my coffee. He had his uh, chicken skins and a little bit of, of uh, meat to try to get him to take some antibiotics. So he's up and moving around. But um, again, he had lost uh, uh, quite a bit of weight since the 26th of June. He was 138 pounds and then he was 124 pounds um, the day uh, before the surgery. So we knew something was going on. And again, this has been a, a process for mast cells for a couple of years. But we were hopeful that morning because he was up. He was interacting. I had texted the vets and said, you know, he seems like he's doing okay. The incision was looking okay, a little bit of weeping, but nothing real serious. And, um, you know, he wanted to interact. He wanted to sniff the food. Um, he, he, you know, it, it's not uncommon for them not to want to eat that morning um, because, you know, you've got a recovery from the surgery and that can make you not feel very good. Um, so, um, but as time went on, he started to get a little bit uh, less active and a little bit more lethargic. So we called the vet up. Um, he had vomited um, um, some very, very um, brownish liquid, um, also had defecated um, a little bit of bloody stool. And so we called the vet back up and said, you know, we're not, we're, we're really concerned kind of where he's at. Um, and we did give him an injection um, for anti-nausea and uh, had, uh, um, you know, hoped to make him feel better. Um, we kind of um, sat with him for, just sat with him for almost an hour just to get him to kind of, um, you know, see how he was at, just to um, get a sense of, of how he was feeling. And he did voluntarily uh, actually get up, um, you know, towards the end of this um, kind of grooming session, greeting session. And, uh, you know, I was concerned about the incision. I wanted him not to be laying on the dirt. And so I um, gave him a fleece blanket under his neck and, um, you know, just to make sure that that incision was kind of staying dry there. And uh, um, he hung out. Jess had stayed with him for about an hour and he would then uh, decided to go into the den and he was sleeping in the den. and. We went about our, our, our other tasks and came back to check on him and he had left the den and um, had passed away behind the den there. So it's our common practice to let the other wolves um, see uh, uh, an individual pack member who has passed away. Um, it's been our experience that they don't search as much if they kind of can process it. And so you see Luna um, there and then we also allowed Grizzer to come over. Um, Aiden's wearing my wolf coat. Uh, um, usually when a pack leader goes, uh, they, and they go with the, uh, curator coat. Um, Shadow had a green one, Aiden had a blue one, and, uh, you can see a little bit of drooling there with Luna. Um, we're not really certain what, um, is being stimulated here, but it's the same kind of, uh, salivation and drooling, um, certainly, um, that we witness when the pups were introduced in 2016, so there must be something in her... Uh, 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 you know, endocrine cycle that's triggered there by that presence. Uh, maybe it's prolactin, maybe it's nurturing. I'm not really sure what it is, although she wasn't the greatest nurturer to those pups. Um, but you'll see the same kind of drooling, same kind of excessive salivation. 
Uh, we see, see that almost every um, adult wolf that we introduce to very, very young pups. So it was interesting that she had kind of the same response to Aiden. And then uh, what was, uh, you know, obviously a concern to us was how Grizzer was going to do without Aiden because uh, Grizzer seemed to depend upon Aiden here um, as his uh, vision is declining from cataracts. He would follow Aiden around. He would sleep with him. Um, he was, you know, even eating um, in close proximity, although there was still a little bit of competition concern that Grizzer had if uh, Aiden was next to him. But but they were certainly much more compatible um, than Grizzer and Luna were in retirement. Um, so uh, that was a concern to us. How is Grizzer going to manage? How is he going to deal with uh, without Aiden there? And so the night, um, that the day that Aiden died, we had a regular scheduled webinar. And so as we were doing the webinar, um, I had the surveillance camera on and it was uh, Luna and it was the East Side Retirement, Luna and, and Grizzer. And I see this uh, interesting behavior from Luna Again, a little bit of that play bow that she likes to do, that um, kind of invite chase, where she kind of scratches at the ground and, and um, tosses her head a little bit, and uh, certainly uh, tail wag um, socially. And to remind you that she is still dealing with the fact that she has a spindle cell sarcoma. Uh, we got her neck healed, and we've certainly got her back where she's feeling like she's eating and she's off the antibiotics, and you know the incision on her neck is healed, but still she is. She has, we know she has a cancer diagnosis, um, yet uh, she gets all stimulated to uh, interact and chase. And of course, Grizzer is 15, going on 15 and a half. I mean, we don't want him to chase too much, you know, at that age, but we certainly uh, appreciate the fact that he's up and still moving around at 15. Uh, so it was kind of interesting. So I don't know if this was triggered by that, you know, what kind of, you know, if this was related to that salivation that was going on when she sniffed the body. You know, maybe that was, you know, a triggering of prolactin. I'm not really sure, um, um, but we certainly um, did see these two socially engage with each other for quite a while, actually. I just only clipped a small portion of this um, interaction. So it was uh, both wolves, um, tails wagging. Um, so this wasn't just Luna chasing after Grizzer. This was uh, Grizzer and Luna um, you know, seeking each other out, um, following each other. They do have three different areas in retirement. They have the east side, they have the back habitat, they have the pack holding area. Um, they go through this big transition uh, roof line that we did to try to protect them from snow and ice in the wintertime. So they're utilizing um, all three areas. And you can see, like I said, um, the vegetation. I definitely want to thank Thunder Bay University and my master's degree in forestry. Uh, uh, um, obviously growing plants and growing trees is one of my jobs and uh, we are doing it quite well here so we give a lot of cover that's really important for Grizzer um, as his vision goes he likes to be able to kind of hide and watch from afar but saw a little bit of a glimpse of a parallel gate there between them so maybe that was triggered um, by this uh, presence of Aiden and maybe in her mind it was a nurturing response um, um, but we certainly did see less of that searching. Um, we saw a little bit of it earlier today the, in the day where they were searching for him, but um, that seems to have subsided. And as a matter of fact, with wolf care today, Grizzer was very social, um, interacting with the wolf care, and um, that was a real good thing. So obviously we also then brought Aiden's body over to Denali and to Grace and two other wolves that were very socially bonded with Aiden, not so much Axel. See a little bit of neophobic behavior there. It's actually not new, um, but just phobic behavior about that drop-down gate. Um, if you're ever building a wolf enclosure, make a slider and not a drop-down on guillotine. But uh, um, you heard Denali whining there. Um, Grizz, uh, Grayson's a little bit more concerned about the uh, people and a little bit more concerned about things, so he didn't show as much uh, kind of a whining response, but I think it was important. And today in wolf care, I believe we saw a very calm uh, pack. And so it could be the fact that it's also cooler. You know, this heat has been nothing but irritating to all of us. Um, um, we still see a lot of axle posturing, that tail, uh, T1 tail, tail wag, uh, chin rest. But Bolts is down in the mix again, as I said last week's YouTube, um, the, the insect uh, population has declined. Um, but they're hanging out. And part of this could be because, you know, obviously the stress of trying to make Aiden comfortable. We knew he was itching and he was just having such a hard time with his mast cell um, growth. 
you know, maybe it was our um, relaxation. Maybe they also, you know, sensed that um, the, um, the stress for Aiden was over. I don't know. Um, but the pack is calm. And uh, our next challenge is how long is Denali going to be living with these young ones? Uh, we, you know, we know that uh, um, these younger animals are going to ramp it up as winter comes. That's, how, that's what they do. Um, we know that's how they act. Denali still seems to want to hang with them. And, uh, you know, we watched a little bit of, of uh, grab biting from Grayson towards Denali um, in the last uh, few days before Aiden died. And I think um, you know, a lot of that was probably our stress. You know, our stress uh, energy is very, very important to wolves, and they can pick up on our anxiety. Um, very important that people recognize um, that uh, these animals are masters at reading body language and, uh, um, and uh, energy that is negative um, will often create some redirection amongst the pack. So, so that's kind of where we're at, and we'll keep you posted as we learn some um, information on the biopsy report. But uh, you know, again, signing off, remembering Aiden.